As you surf around the web, you'll probably go to some of your favorite sites, familiar places with information that interests you. You're probably going to spend some of your time on social media, seeing a few untruths and exaggerations about how amazing someone else's life is, and maybe posting a few pictures that show others how amazing your life is. Even if it isn't, <laughs> you're likely to respond to a few, um, hold on just a second, uh, Oh, sorry. Respond to a few texts and uh, ignore a few others. And send a meme or two and plan some get-together. It's possible you will spend some time streaming a few videos or more. Maybe something about uh, true crime, fashion, meditation, current events, or some political propaganda or a conspiracy theory. And if you are young... A few of those videos are very likely to be watching someone else's video screen while they play a video game. <laughs> Today, you're not terribly likely to have many real conversations with real people. You know, interactions that are not FaceTime or Zoom, but analog conversations where the other person is in the same room as you are. Those conversations especially meaningful ones, where you connect with someone else besides yourself in a very real way, and not through text shorthand or the digital mask of virtual, as in not quite real, communication. Face to face. Can you imagine a time when none of that was possible? How did we survive? <laughs> there was a time when the only option for face-to-face -face communication and gathering was in the real world. And that was the reality of the time. There was no other option. And in the town where I grew up, that gathering place was the post office in Farron, Utah. It was the perfect spot. Folks came every day to get their mail to do a little shopping, to fill a gas tank, and to get involved in conversation. And nobody had a phone in their hand or in their pocket back then. In fact, the phones we did have were attached to a wall in your house by a wire. <laughs> and you had to share that line with about three to five other households all tapped into the same wire. So you learned never to divulge a secret over the phone. Though Farron, at the time, was almost 100% non-drinking Mormons, there was a small bar a few doors away from the post office, on the other side of the butcher shop, where some would slip away for a wee drop or more. The old guys that gathered at the post office were affectionately referred to by my father as the Spit and Whittle Gang. They gathered outside, in front of the post office, talking, whittling sticks, Kind and good natures, they always had a story to tell about what was happening around town. Which was useful because the place was just too small for its own newspaper. You either got your news from the Spit and Whittle gang, or at church during Sunday school. <laughs> the only news of the world that got in was over a crackly AM radio station, or one of the three live TV stations, which had world news at 6 and regional news at 6.30, and there might be another report around 10, but after that, the stations usually went off the air, and that was about it. So a gathering place was really important. Barbershops, conversation, and entertainment. Before the virtual world, most all societies had their gathering spots. Sometimes it was a pub, or a diner, or even a gas station would be that place. One of the most common was a barber shop, if the place was big enough to have one. And as I recall, Farron was not big enough to have one that was centrally located and open all day. But the barber shop was an anchor point from way back, like as far back as 300 BC in the Greek culture. It was a place to gather, to share stories, and maybe even get your hair cut or shave. But through history, 
There has been more going on at the barber shop than a comfortable chair and a conversation. And in more recent times, a good TV and a potentially air-conditioned space. The barber shop was a place of entertainment. And we're not just talking about good jokes or the barber shop quartet. We're talking about something much more dramatic. See, through time, the barber shop was a place where there was always someone with high quality and sharp instruments and good, steady hands. And so at the barber shop, you could be a spectator to a tooth extraction, which was quite common, or minor surgeries. And if you were really lucky, maybe even an amputation. <laughs> there wasn't much else going on. So yes, that kind of stuff actually drew a crowd of onlookers. No kidding. If things had gone just a bit differently, it would be your barber doing your appendectomy, removing your tonsils, heck, maybe some open heart or a little cosmetic surgery. There's a reason why the red and white barber pole is the ubiquitous symbol it is. It represents the rinsed but well-stained bloody rags hung in the wind on a pole to dry. Absurd past, irrational, future. Events and circumstances turn in strange ways. A few years back, it took a little while to move information around. Today, we have more than we could ever take in, and we can hold it in our hand and carry it around in our pocket. Yesterday, the barber was performing surgery. The doctor prescribed potions and remedies. Today, things are very different. Most historians will admit that most all of history is lost to time. We just don't know what really happened. And even when someone has tried to document it, there's still so much missing. For example, the assassination of John F. Kennedy was witnessed by thousands, and the written accounts were spread all over the place. And because of the films, a whole world has seen it happen. But Anyone who takes a deep dive into the event will find there is so much we just don't know. And we probably never will. So, here's the ounce. Understanding that history holds such unrevealed surprises, you can bet our future will play out in unimagined ways too. And as it does, people are going to gather, in one way or another, to talk about it and maybe gossip a little, if the story's good. The future marches on to where fate and God directed. The proof? You have a smartphone in your pocket, and your barber is not your surgeon. And that's it. An ounce submitted for your consideration. Well, hope you enjoyed that. If you did, do us a big favor. Punch that, uh, subscribe button, share this with your friends, give us a comment, tell us if there's something you'd like to hear about. We'd really appreciate it. It helps. Thanks.